Greetings voyagers. We are in Gloucester, Massachusetts. At the Stony Cove Greenbelt Essex County's Land Trust. This is conservation land. I've never hiked up through here, but I intend to now. It's right on the highway, right on Route 128, as you can see. But I wanted to stop because Yeah, that little house out there on the raft. That's what you call social distance. <laughs> All right, it's cold out. I'm going to get back in the van. Yeah, that's social distance, all right. Uh, this is just a quick update. I woke up this morning and my head was spinning. It was swimming. I was dizzy, weak, lightheaded. I had a nasty headache. Took a couple of Tylenol. Um... And it really threw a scare into me. I, I guess I'm still cycling through the symptoms. It's past now. It's about, uh, I don't know, four o'clock in the afternoon, I guess. Oh, it's almost five. So, yeah, it's funny. The, the symptoms are starting to fade away and I'm feeling better. But yeah, we're in Gloucester. This is the Anasquam River. It's low tide, as you can see. Uh, I used to do a lot of scuba diving up here. I made more than 500 scuba dives up around Cape Ann and the North Shore and Boston Harbor back in the day. Um, and there's a boatyard down there, just around the bend there in the river by the railroad bridge. Gloucester Marina or the Cape Ant, no, it's the Gloucester Marina, I think. Uh, one of my dive buddies had a boat there, and uh, we did a lot of diving in and out of that marina. And this is nice. Um, it doesn't say we can't park here, and the woods look really nice. One of these days, I'll get up here and do some hiking around these trails. Shoot some video up there, but not today. I'm still feeling a little under the weather. I still feel kind of weak. Um, but yeah, there. Um, there's only. There's probably not many places where a van dweller could boondock up here. The entire North Shore of Boston, except. <laughs> Perhaps the exception of maybe Revere and Lynn, which are, you know, um, aside from right along the beach, they're economically depressed, uh, low-income habitation. Lynn we lived in for six years in the ghetto. And, uh, yeah, you could boondock in Lynn, and aside from thieves, burglars, and what have you, uh, I, I doubt that any resident is going to call cops on you for parking overnight on the street. But up here in the North Shore, where there's a lot of money, a lot of wealthy people. Um, I lived one year in Manchester by the sea, my junior year in high school. One of the best years of my life. But that is an ultra-wealthy town. I was lucky to have spent just one year there. There's no boondocking. They've got the parking locked up tight. Um, but Gloucester, Beverly, Salem, 
you know, if you're in a residential neighborhood, uh, even if you're parked legally overnight, if it's not posted, no restrictions, all it's going to take is one phone call from a suspicious or angry neighbor. They just don't like van dwellers. They don't want... And the city of Gloucester, by the way, has a, a ban on overnight parking for recreational vehicles. Uh, nomadic fanatic Eric Jacobs, he tried staying here one night and he got evicted. Um, there is no overnight parking for RVs in Gloucester. Now, a van is a different story. And I've identified one, possibly two places where you might be able to park overnight. But again, um, all it's going to take is just one neighbor, uh, one resident, to put a call into the cops and you'll get evicted. And that's happened to us in Salem. We didn't get complaints from a neighbor. It's just the cops. Didn't see, didn't, they, don't like, they don't like us. They don't even know us. But they don't like us and they don't want us in this city. So, yeah, we've been kicked out of places where we were legally allowed to park. As evidenced by one of my earlier videos. But um, So I can foresee a time when you know, cities and towns will, will enact these no overnight parking places. Uh, they may not be able to restrict sleeping in a vehicle because that could be unconstitutional. But they can control the parking. So I can foresee a time when van dwellers, and RVers especially, will be restricted to out west where there's lots of public land where you can camp without restrictions. I hope that doesn't happen because I love it here. I've lived here most of my life up in this area, Boston's North Shore, and I love it here. I absolutely love it. And I would hate to have to leave it. But someday it may come to that. We'll just have to wait and see. Other than that, I have no other news. Uh, I hope I get over this. Whatever it is, I still haven't been tested. I'm going to wait until this wave has crested and washed over us. And it's in our, in our past. And then I'll get tested to see if I actually had it. But I'm pretty sure I do. And uh, I know it can take weeks to fully recover. But I hope it happens soon because I'm really getting tired of this. And I'm really getting tired of all the sanitizing, wiping things down, keeping your distance, cover your face with a cloth and all this crap and senior hours at the grocery store from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. I really don't want to get up at 5 o'clock or 5.30 in the morning so I can get in and get what I need, but I'm going to have to. And I'm really getting tired of showering in the van. It is such an effort. It's such an ordeal. But I'm just going to have to put up with it until things change. That could be indefinitely. And there's no camping out west now. All the, all the federal lands are close to camping. All of them. Uh, I do hear from some of the van dwelling channels that there's some state parks in Arizona that are still open. But if everybody's going to go flocking to them because they've been shut out of everywhere else, it won't take long before those places get closed down too. So these are hard times. For van dwellers and mobile people, these are hard times. Who could have foreseen a pandemic ruining our, our lifestyle? But, you know, for me, van dwelling wasn't a lifestyle decision. It wasn't an experiment. You know, hey, wouldn't it be cool to try living in a van? No. For us, it was an existential imperative. We simply had no other choice. And so here we are. I hope you all are doing well out there. Um, keep in touch. Let's help each other out when we can, if we can. And until then, my friends, stay well. Live long and prosper. Peace and
out.